Okay, what I have here is another explanation for Unit 3's homework on three boxes. So what I've decided to do is replace the boxes with three dudes. We have Bob, Joe, and Ed. And so what I'm doing is showing you what happens in a real life situation where these three guys are being accelerated by somebody pulling on Ed's leading arm. All right, so the first question is what is T1? Or what is the uh, force exerted on Ed's leading arm? And so in that case, what you have to do is you look at this problem like it's three different bodies all connected to one, because if you just look at this portion right here, everything behind it is being accelerated, and it's all being accelerated at the same rate. So acceleration of Ed, Joe, and Bob will all be the same, so they all have to move in unison. So it's like putting all three guys on top of each other and still pulling on Ed's leading arm. Second question is, what is the net force on Ed? And so as a result here, when we're talking about net forces, we're applying Newton's second law. Sum of the forces equals the mass times acceleration. So if we go ahead and look at that, we have the sum of the forces equal ma. And so we know that the mass in this case that's being accelerated is Ed. And so we're asking for the net force on Ed. And so this is the, we can put in Ed here as well. And so we're looking at the acceleration of Ed, which is already given. You know the mass of Ed. And so we just have to come up with some of the forces. So what are the forces acting on Ed? Well, we have a force here pulling him to the right. And then we have Joe Bob pulling him backwards as well. But they all end up accelerating in the positive direction. So the net force on Ed must still result in his acceleration in the forward direction. So T1 will be in the positive direction. T2 will be in the negative direction. And when you add those together, you get a net force such that you still have an acceleration of Ed equal to his mass times the acceleration given in the problem. So then the next question is, what is the tension or the net uh, force on uh, Ed's trailing arm, and that's the one where only one in seven of you roughly were able to get the answer right the first time, so we need to spend a little bit of time on that question. But so again, essentially it's saying, what is T2? <clears throat> and so T2 is acting on Ed's shoulder and also acting on Joe's shoulder. And so whatever pull Ed is feeling on his trailing arm is the same pull that Joe is feeling on his leading arm. And again, when you have a connection between two bodies, that tension is going to be the same uh, in each case. But this way, it's pulling Ed backwards. This is pulling Joe forward. And so that's what we're really looking at is that tension in between. And so I like to talk about extremes again. So my extreme case is here where we have Joe Bob trailing King Kong. And so now King Kong is the leading dude. And so we're accelerating all three of them, and so King Kong's leading arm is going to feel quite a bit of force because of his mass as well as Joe Bob's mass. On his trailing arm, however, you can see that there's very little mass behind him, so he's not going to feel very much tug at all, so the force on his trailing arm will be pretty small, in fact, compared to what he feels on his leading arm. The other way to look at it is let's put King Kong on the back and we'll replace Bob with King Kong and leave Ed and Joe still in there. And so now when we're pulling on Ed's leading arm, of course he's got to pull Joe and King Kong, so his leading arm is really going to be sore. And Joe's uh, leading arm is also going to be sore because he has to also pull King Kong along, um, but it'll be a little bit less sore than Ed's leading arm. And then finally, if you look at the trailing arm here, Joe's trailing arm is still going to be pretty sore because he's got to pull King Kong along. Um, but it'll be a little bit less than uh, his leading arm because he's not having to pull his mass with his leading arm. He's just pulling King Kong's mass with his trailing arm. And so when you're looking at <coughs> what tension 2 happens to be, you're just going to see that uh, you have to take into account that you're pulling uh, two bodies forward. And as a result, now we just look at this portion and what's being done behind it. And so whether we have Joe and Bob separated or they're, they're stacked on top of each other, that force that you're feeling on the leading edge of Joe's arm is going to be equal to the mass at times the acceleration of these two bodies. 
And then what is the net force on Joe? Well, same thing that we had for the net force on Ed. They had the same mass, so as a result, the net force that Ed experiences will be the net force that Joe experiences, which will be the net force that Bob experiences, because they all have the same mass. They all have the same acceleration, so net force Ed, net force Joe, net force Bob, net force Bob will be the same. And so then finally, what is the uh, tension uh, of the uh, third grouping of arms? And so in this case right here, we're going to be pulling Joe's uh, arm out of his socket, and Bob will be pulling his arm out of his socket, because they both have weight, weak tendons. And so as a result, you're just going to look at what the tension is here, same as we did over here, but in this case now, it's just a result of Joe pulling Bob forward and an acceleration. And so as a result, it'll just be the uh, mass times acceleration of only a single body in that case. Maybe that will help you understand this problem a little bit better.